presenting Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, in our new Mr. Keene series, in which the kindly old investigator brings to us his most celebrated cases on Mondays through Fridays at this same time. Tonight, the Shrieking Prisoner Murder Case. <laughs> The scene opens at night in a large, old-fashioned house in a lonely section of New York City. A young man has just entered the darkened interior, and as he moves across the room, he hears a sudden, blood-curdling shriek of frustration and anguish coming from another part of the house. (coughs) The young man stands frozen for a moment. Then as he quickly moves to a door and opens it, A shot rings out. A moment later, a murderer peers down with grim satisfaction at the figure on the floor. The lifeless body of a young man with a bullet through his heart. And now... Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner, Mike Clancy, are looking into the murder. The scene of the crime is a home owned by two weird sisters, Martha and Amy Carson. And the murdered man is their niece's young husband. Why has he been murdered? Mr. Keene is first attempting to find the source of the frightful shrieking which has been heard in the house. But he and Mike are being blocked by Martha Carson and Luther Prague, her burly handyman who has entered the room with an axe in his hand. As Mr. Keene says, Martha Carson, I'm here with my partner, Mike Clancy, to investigate the murder of young Donald Travers. I suggest you tell your handyman to let us go upstairs to find out who's shrieking up there. No, you can't go up there. If you go up, I'll chop you both to pieces. My partner, Mike Clancy, happens to be armed himself, Luther Bray. And my gun can speak a lot faster than his axe, boss. I told you to get out of my house, Mr. Keene. We're going to find out who's upstairs, Miss Martha, shrieking like a trapped animal. If you try to prevent us, you'll only put yourself further under suspicion for the murder that occurred in this house last night. Luther, don't let Mr. Keene go upstairs. Get out of here, both of you. I'll chop the two of you to pieces with this axe if you try to go upstairs. Look out, boss. He means it. Careful, Mike. Miss Martha, call this man off, or there'll be trouble. No. You have no right to search this house. Are you getting out, or do I chop you both to pieces with this axe? Put that axe down, Luther. And be quick about it. Well, Miss Martha... Put it down, or I'd knock it out of your hand. I'll tear you up, aren't you? Luther! Well, he's not hurt bad. I just had to quiet him down a little. Well, Miss Martha, are you going to take us upstairs now? Or do we find out by ourselves who is shrieking up there? And what it has to do with the murder that occurred here in your house last night? I... I'll take you upstairs, Mr. Keene. Come with me. (laughs) Before I open the door, Mr. Keene, let me tell you something. No one in this house right now had anything to do with the murder of young Donald Travers, my niece's husband. That remains to be proven, Miss Martha. My niece, Jane Travers, should never have sent you here. Jane Travers only wanted to help you prove your innocence, Miss Martha. The police may be putting both you and your sister under arrest shortly. But why, Mr. Keene? We had nothing against Donald. Well, it's your reputation that's against you, lady. You mean the reputation we have in this neighborhood for being eccentric, Mr. Clancy? For being weird sisters? There's talk about the possibility of insanity in your family. (coughs) And if that don't sound like a crazy woman, I never heard one. Mr. Keene, there is insanity in my family. As you'll see right now. 
You can go inside the room. Mr. King, there she is. Saints preserve us, she's staring at us. With vacant, expressionless eyes. Look at her hair, falling down like strings of rope over her face. And her fingernails, they must be an inch long. Mr. Keene, this is my sister, Amy. And you keep her locked up in this room, Miss Martha? For her own good. <laughs> For my own good? You mean because you hate me? Everybody hates me! Amy! Don't touch me, Martha! I'll kill anyone who touches me! <laughs> Miss Martha, you lied when you said your sister Amy was away in the country. I didn't want anyone to know that Amy was up here in this room, Mr. Keene. Because I don't want her taken away and put in an asylum. I'll do anything, anything to prevent that. Be careful what you say, Miss Martha. Anything could mean that you may have murdered young Donald Travers to stop him from discovering your secret. No, no, I didn't kill him, Mr. Keene, and neither did my sister Amy. But Amy was inside the house when the murder occurred. Yes, she was. But, Mr. Keene, I told you about a man you ought to question in this case, George Wheeler. When he broke up with Amy, she lost her mind. She loved George so much. George? Where is George? Why doesn't he come to see me? Why? Amy, try to control yourself. <laughs> Miss Martha, you told us that this man, George Wheeler, hated your nephew, Donald Travers, because Travers accused Wheeler of being untrustworthy and advised your sister, Amy, here not to marry him. My sister, Amy, went out of her mind because she was so madly in love with Wheeler. The shock of finding out he was beneath her was too much. And you had nothing to do with it? Martha had a great deal to do with it, Mr. Keene. George Wheeler! I heard what you said to these people as I came up the stairs, Martha. I heard you trying to accuse me of murder. George! You've come to rescue me! Oh, Amy, I can't take you away from here. I didn't come. Then I'll fight my way out! I'll tear my way out with my fingernails! Amy, and... stop that! You know I didn't mean it, Martha. <laughs> Don't be angry. Amy, I'm terribly sorry. What are you doing in my house, George Wheeler? I told you to stay out of here for good. I came, Martha, because I thought the police would still be here. And I had some evidence for them. But first, I want to clear up a few matters with Mr. Keene. I know who you are, sir. Well, Mr. Wheeler? Amy Carson loved me. She would have married me if it hadn't been for her sister, Martha. Martha made Amy turn me down when I proposed. And rightly so. You knew my sister had some money, and you thought you could live on that once you married her. I have a good job, Martha. You know that. I don't need Amy's money. If it weren't for her sister, Martha's domination, Amy wouldn't be the poor, broken figure you see her as now. Look at her, Mr. Keene. It's pitiful. Sure, and she just stares at the wall as if none of us were in the room. My heart breaks when I see her this way, Mr. Clancy. It's possible, isn't it, Mr. Wheeler, that Amy Carson could have resented Donald Travers just as you did? Uh, how do you mean, Mr. Keene? Why exactly did Donald Travers object to her marriage to you? He said that I was after her money. Martha, do you and your sister have a great deal of money? We had enough to live comfortably, Mr. Keene. Well, judging by this house, it couldn't be a fortune. In any case, Mike, if Amy Carson had resented the things young Donald Travers said about the man she loved, she may have wanted to strike back at her nephew herself. Well, no, Mr. Keene. Amy wouldn't murder her because of that. Amy Carson is obviously insane, Mr. Wheeler, and probably dangerous. And in that state, she could be capable of anything. Even murder, with no motive at all. And what about Martha Carson? Is she completely above any suspicion? How dare you accuse me, George Wheeler? Mr. Keene, do you think I could have murdered my nephew to prevent him from finding out about Amy and sending her to an asylum? Well, that's how the police may take it, Miss Martha. Mr. Wheeler, a moment ago you said you had some new evidence. What is it? 
This gold watch, Mr. King. Well, let's see it, mister. Well, I found it this morning, and I recognized it as Donald Trapper's watch. It belonged to the murder victim? Yes, Mr. Keene, absolutely. I'd seen Travers wear it several times. And where did you find it? In Luther Prague's room. And boss, Luther Prague must have stolen this watch from the murdered man. And if he did, Mike, we'll be dealing with another suspect in this case. Mr. Wheeler, was Luther Prague downstairs when you came into the house? No, Mr. Keene. Well, he must have come to and left right after we came up here, boss. Yes, Mike. Where does he live, Mr. Wheeler? Uh, he can usually be found in an old abandoned shack. It's in an empty lot a short distance from here. I wonder if anything else was missing from the victim's body that Luther Prague may have taken. Well, I searched Luther's room carefully, but that was all I could find. Mr. Well, King. it's all beginning to add up, boss. Looks like that big muscle man, Luther Prague, is the next fellow we want to see. Yes, Mike. Martha, before I leave... I want to know what you intend doing about your sister Amy here. She's insane. She may be dangerous. I... I'll have her examined by a doctor, Mr. Keene. And if he tells me to send her away to a mental institution, I will. Mr. Wheeler. Yes, Mr. Keene. Would you point out Luther Prague's shack to us now? I will, Mr. Keene. And then I must ask you to remain close by yourself. For further question. In other words, I'm still a suspect, too. And frankly, yes. Very well, Mr. Keene. I'll do just as you say. All right, Mick. Now we'll have a talk with Luther Prague and find out just how he obtained this watch and what he knows about young Donald Travers' murder. Okay, boss. I'll be talking to you later, Miss Martha. All right, Mr. Keene. <laughs> Amy. Amy, stop crying. You said you were going to send me away. You said that, Martha. I hate you. They'll never take you away, Amy. I won't let them. I'll kill anyone who tries to take you away. I swear it. The handyman Luther Prague has become a fourth murder suspect on Mr. Keene's list. But was young Donald Travers murdered with robbery as the motive? Or is the murder linked to the mystery of the insane woman so closely guarded by her older sister? The rest of this exciting story will be heard on Thursday and Friday at this same time. Be sure to listen tomorrow to Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. Be sure to listen to Mr. Keene tomorrow, Thursday, at this same time for the next episode of The Shrieking Prisoner Murder Case. And don't miss the regular half-hour Mr. Keene program heard every Friday night over most of these stations. Tomorrow evening, CBS Radio gives the spotlight to Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage with a poignant drama titled The Younger Sister. It tells how an older sister's feeling of responsibility toward her sister threatens the marriages of both girls. Don't miss Kathy and Elliot Lewis on stage tomorrow night on most of these same stations. Also tomorrow evening at the Star's Address, enjoy the laughs when you meet Millie on her latest escapade. Millie Bronson, played by Elena Verdugo, and her addle-headed mama get into all kinds of troubles up in a mountain resort. Yes, meet Millie tomorrow night, and you'll laugh. Your announcer, Stuart Metz.